All right, ladies and gentlemen, YouTube listeners, here we have it. I'm finally making a commitment to give you a video every week. I think Wednesday is going to be the night. This Wednesday night video is going to be a welding engineering topic video, or WET. And so what I am going to ask you to do is if I, for some reason, fail to make a video, relentlessly harass me, harass the crap out of me until I get you a video out. And uh, it would also be appreciated if you could, by some chance, maybe in the comments of some of my videos or something, give me an idea of what you would like to see. Thank you and enjoy what episode number one. Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, this uh, little video I plan on hopefully shedding some light on the age-long debate that every welder will have on the push technique versus a pull technique or going vertical up versus going vertical down and uh, kind of just got it drawn out here on the whiteboard and going to talk a little bit about to just again hopefully shed some light on it I'm gonna bring you guys in a lot closer so you can see all this All right, so with the push versus pull, what we got here is uh, this would be kind of what you would see in a cross section of a weld if it were etched. And um, so when you're pushing or using a pushing technique, you're more what's happening is that you, if you come down to this horrible drawing here, is that your the heat that is or the energy that's going into the part as you are pushing in this direction then the new heat energy is going into I guess material that has not previously been heated up and so it's got to it would require more energy to penetrate deeper but since it's it doesn't have that what you get is normally a a shallower wider uh, profile on your weld and so like you're here you know like if that was on a plate or a butt joint and then also here on the fillet all right so then if we get into what a cross section if you were to pull looks like is something like you know here and then you're gonna get a little more penetration there um, and the reason for that is it's like okay so now you're you're pulling so you're going this direction you've already welded over here the base metals already got all that heat in it from the weld and you're continuing to put more energy into it so then your filler wire that's going into this area that's got all this new old energy plus new energy you've got a total of net energy greater than you would if pushing so you get a deeper penetration and since you penetrate deeper you tend to have a little bit narrower and slightly humpier uh, profile on your well so then what does that mean for like I guess for penetration what is it what is it doing for you uh, well, when you've got, say, like a butt joint, a square groove butt joint, uh, your the push is on top here, and you can see you're just getting, I mean, you get fusion, you're just not getting the penetration, whereas on the bottom, that would be what you would see if you were using a pull technique. So, is there a right or wrong? It's really just application-based. So, like I say, if you're doing a square groove joint, then you would want to have either a straight up angle or a slight pull angle to get a deeper penetration. And if you want to, I guess, put some redundancy in your design that you're going to get a full joint penetration well, then whether they're going to push or pull, you can specify in the WPS but you would more than likely actually use a 
a beveled groove so that you are, I guess your first pass is going to penetrate down here more and then second, third, fourth, fifth, so you know. And then that way that's just kind of building some redundancy into your joint design. Now if we come over here to vertical up versus vertical down, what we end up with is vertical up is kind of like your pull where you're going to get a little bit more penetration and a humpier profile on your welds whereas vertical down and this is where this is where it's kind of unfavorable for vertical down is that it's as if you're pushing and you have a lower pro or lower penetration and actually in your fillets you you're very common that you get a concave fillet, which isn't good for your joint design. So, I guess just a, a, another picture here is you're, you're more likely with vertical up to get a penetration all the way into the root of your fillet than you would with vertical down. Not to say that vertical down you are not going to, you know, you're going to, but you're, it's to build, again, to build redundancy into the joint, a vertical up is a better guarantee than a vertical down. All right, so now I just kind of want to go into penetration and admixture. So, We've, we've kind of talked about, okay, what's it going to do for penetration over here on the butt joints and what's it doing for penetration over here on those fillet welds. But what about admixture? I mean, what, what does this really account to? And it's just like, okay, well, depending on the materials, like certain, just for example, an aluminum material, uh, sometimes you've got a type of aluminum that you're using a specific type of filler material and the whole point of this combination is to uh, come like have a composition in the end of the weld that is uh, left or right of a line of chemicals like uh, your level of manganese in aluminum is what will cause you know, cracking and site and certain things like that. So, so with the level of manganese being an issue, what you might see is with aluminum that they would prefer if you if you want to have more of the com of the base metal in the weld joint like the chemical composition from the base metal, if you want to take those characteristics more than the filler metal, then you would want a square groove weld. And that way the majority, like approximately 70% of the composition of the weld is the base metal and then 30% is the filler material. Whereas if you would have a, a V groove, then it's kind of flip side that and you have 70% or maybe 80% filler material and 20% or 30% of it is the base metal. So that's that's what your admixture is and that's something like so if you to I guess clarify on why that matters is if you have a square groove weld but you still need to get 100% penetration that's where like in this case, you know, pulling your joint, you're going to get more penetration versus a push, you're going to get less penetration. So that comes into play with admixture. I've uh, kind of covered over a little bit of the basics on the, the push versus pull, vertical up versus vertical down. Uh, I hope that it shed some light on you just to kind of recap it there's a lot of things that it affects is there a right or a wrong it's like you know what 90 percent of the time no there's not a right or a wrong it will it'll do the job all you have to do is have complete fusion in your weld joint you don't have to always have like especially on fillet welds most of them aren't designed that you have killer penetration 
Uh, if you have a double V groove or something, you know, you don't need killer penetration because your joint's going to be 90% filler metal. So when it does come into effect is like, you know, special joint designs or admixtures, you know, with getting into specialty metals and aluminum and stuff like that. But So there we have it. There's no real right or wrong until you get into some special characteristics that you're looking for. Hope that you uh, like this. If you have some comments that need some clarification or a rebuttal response, you know, I put it in the comments. I enjoy that kind of stuff. And uh, then also be sure to like or subscribe. Or if you don't like the video, you know, I dislike the video. No, don't dislike the video, please. But uh, thank you.